Hey you guys, thanks for tuning in uh, as we continue our series, Asking for a Friend. You know, as we realize we're not in our live service like we have like we were last week, um, we'll be continuing that th next week, um, July 1st. Uh, we were just safety concerns for COVID-19 and we just wanted to be sure. We didn't want to put anyone else at risk, having a bunch of people there putting on a live stream. And so um, we're doing a video tonight. Next week, though, we'll be back at it with the live stream. And hopefully here soon, uh, we'll be back to meeting together uh, for our services. But like I said, we are continuing um, our series, Asking for a Friend. And in this video, uh, I want to provoke some thoughts that will cause you to evaluate your relationship with God. Okay, that's my goal is to provoke some thoughts that'll cause you to to reevaluate that'll cause you to look on the inside and say all right like is this me am i this person as we're going to talk about tonight and so the subject we're talking about is consumerism versus the church consumerism versus the church you know this series asking for a friend is all about talking about the stuff that kind of seems uncomfortable in the church or stuff that we just don't talk about very much and so that's why we're doing this uh, series i hope that you join in you tune into the videos you watch the live streams um because i think i feel like this can be really and it's going to be really impactful um for not just us as a church um, but for us individually, um, as we go out and show the love of God. So what is consumerism? What is consumerism? An easy definition is an obsession with shopping and acquiring stuff, right? Consumerism kind of comes from the base word of uh, consumer. We are all consumers, right? We're, we're constantly consuming. I consume a lot of food. Yeah, some of you can, can tell I can I consume a lot of food. But y'all consume other things. We all, we're constantly consuming, whether it be um, we are consuming actual material goods or whether it be we're consuming ideas, we're consuming feelings, we're consuming experiences, moments, whatever it may be, we're constantly consuming. And so we're talking about consumerism versus the church and so why consumerism versus the church so as consumers we are constantly looking for what's next what do i like the most what brand fits the best are you playstation or xbox or what's really big that i'm i guess really late on pc right in the middle right uh you playstation xbox pc uh, what food? What's your favorite food? What restaurant do you like best? Where do you prefer to go? What makes you feel the best? What makes you feel better? What experiences do you like more or do you like less? No joke right now, there's a red wasp flying around and he's making me really nervous. So if I start swinging all of a sudden, you know why. But too many times we take our consumer nature, this thing that makes us all about us what we like what we feel what we experience and we put it into our relationship with god we take this consumer nature and we put it into a relationship with god you see if i don't like playstation i'll move to xbox or pc i love playstation i'm not moving but you get what i'm saying if the shirt starts fitting different, you don't like the material that they've started using, you don't like the style, you don't know, you don't like the way it's gotten shorter or longer, you buy a new brand, right? I started buying New Balance shoes because they have a huge selection of wide fit, sh wide shoes because I got fat feet. And but like I don't like the fit. So like next time I buy shoes, I'm not buying, probably not gonna buy New Balance. I'm gonna buy some more. I'm gonna buy Nikes. I'm going back to Nikes because. They just fit better. My feet feel better in them, right? If the food isn't as good as your at your favorite restaurant anymore, you're going to go somewhere else. If God doesn't answer my prayers, if God doesn't answer my prayers, do we move on from him or stop believing in him? Nope. I mean, at least we shouldn't. But too many times, that's what we do. 
We might still go to church. We might have not completely given up on God. But we're just like, eh. I don't think that's best for me. I don't think investing in this is going to be very good for me. That's how we act. When we don't think things are going our way. When it's become so much about us instead of about God. We take our, this consumer nature that says everything has to be about me. It's all about me and what I like and what makes me feel the best. And we put that into a relationship with God. So I want to bring up a few points uh, in this video. And the first point is this. The reduction of God and the church. The reduction of God and the church. If we bring our consumer attitude into our walk with God, God becomes more of a means to an end. He becomes a mean to an end. You caught that, right? A means to an end. He has no value. His value, like everything else, is determined on his use, usefulness to us. If God's useful to us, if we've got stuff we're dealing with, issues that are going on, yeah, we'll go to God. But as soon as that answer is prayer, that prayer is answered or something happens or a move happens or something goes on. All right. Deuces, I'm going to go back to do what I want to do. He's just a means to an end. So as, as if we take this consumer, this consumer attitude into our walk with God, we reduce God to nothing. Nothing of what he should be in our life. If we bring that attitude into the church, into going to church and choosing a church, whatever, I've got a few statements written down that uh, I think you might have said, you might have heard someone say, or you've thought before. I don't like the music. I don't like the preacher. Now, don't say nothing. It's too dark in here. It's too bright. I don't like the lights. I don't like what I see. I don't like what's going on. It just, it wasn't fun. I was bored. I felt very bored during the service. Some of y'all that's going to preach to you and it's going to touch a nerve. But what happens is, is when we take that attitude into the church, into what church we're going to, what youth ministry, what's going on, we miss out because we're so focused on what we want. I'm going to raise my hand. This has been me before. Instead of what God wants and what God's doing in that service or in that church. Yeah, I've gone to services where I've been like, I don't like the preacher. He's got a weird style to him. His voice a little too high for me. He goes a little too low for me. I can't let hear. He's real old school when he's preaching. I've I've done that before. I mean, I can't deny it. But that doesn't mean it was right. It wasn't good because I missed out on what God was doing in that service. Not only that, but we do a disservice to God's family and to God because the gifts that God has given us, we're not using. We're not using to, to impact his kingdom. We're not using to grow God's family. We're, we're holding them back because we have this attitude of it's all about me when it's not. It's not all about us. And so have, have you ever been the one to place consumerism or being a consumer, this attitude in your relationship with God or just within the church? Instead of considering merely how you feel, focus on what God wants. Because once we act like everything's about me, we reduce God and we reduce the church. Everything relies on our experience as to whether it was good or bad. Just because you didn't feel anything going on doesn't mean God wasn't moving in that service or, or during that altar call or in someone else's life. Just because your experience wasn't what you thought it was supposed to mean doesn't mean it was necessarily wrong. We are called to be obedient and to walk humbly with God. It's just the thing about it. We're called to be obedient and to walk humbly with him. And that's what we're called to do. Not to determine what's good or bad. 
what we should or shouldn't be a part of, that's, that's up to God. We're just called to be obedient. And my second point is this, Lord to label. Caught that, right? Lord to label. Within consumerism, the customer is king. Have you ever heard the statement, the customer is always right? I love H-E-B. I love going to H-E-B because guess what? They take care of the customer. Right? They take care of the customer. It's all about me up in there. That's why I like going to H-E-B. They're good about that. But Jesus isn't king. The customer's king. Let's make sure our walk with God isn't just a label, but a lifestyle. Mm. You heard that, right? It's not just a label, but it's a lifestyle. We don't just call ourselves Christians just to be Christians. It's cool to have the shirts. It's cool to listen to the music. It's cool to have the, the, the I got my little Jesus hat. It's cool to have all that stuff. It's cool to say I go to this church with this youth group or, or with that preacher or I listen to this guy or, or that guy's invested in my life, whatever it may be. It's cool. Don't get me wrong. But if it's, we're not living out that lifestyle, if we're not living out the value and the ethics that we find in the Bible, we're, we're missing the point. God's gone from merely a, a, a lordship in our life to just a label that we put on when we feel like wearing it, when you feel like wearing your Nike shirt to look fly, right? Are we just tagging ourselves as Christians or are we truly living as followers of Jesus? You see, Jesus should make an impact in your life. Yeah, he should make a definite impact in your life. And if you self-examine your heart, your motives, your thoughts, your minds, and he has not made an impact in your life. I want to ask you a question. Have you actually allowed him to make an impact? Have you truly said, God, I'm giving you over the reins instead of just, Lord, I'm going to ask for forgiveness because I want to go to heaven, but I'm going to go do whatever I want to on the side. Jesus should make an impact in our lives and sometimes we might not like it sometimes the experience for us it might not be the greatest because we're gonna have to make some changes so it all needs to be and focus and revolve around God our entire life needs to focus around God and on him and on his kingdom and being obedient to him if we let our consumer nature into our walk with God it will become about what can God do for me instead of how can I serve him and that needs to be our attitude and our focus is how can I serve God? How can I serve his kingdom? How can I serve his church? How can I serve his people? That needs to be our attitude, not what's in it for me, because that's the wrong attitude. And I feel like so many times that's how we go to church. That's how we go to service. That's how we talk to people is what's in it for me. What am I going to get out of this how is this going to make me feel good? What experience is this going to bring out for me? What good experience is this going to bring out for me? And that's not the point. The point is Jesus. That's the point. That's what we ought to be pointed back to. I'm going to close with, with this statement. And answer this. Is Jesus a goal or a commodity in your life? Is Jesus a goal? Is Jesus the goal? Or is he just a commodity in your life? Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to share. I ask that you just speak to our hearts. Lord, as, as, as we begin to examine ourselves, as I continue to examine myself, um, Lord, am I more worried about um, what I'm going to experience or how I'm going to feel? Uh, or am I more worried about, Lord, what are you doing? How are you speaking to me? What's going on? What are you trying to teach me in this moment? Because, Lord, I feel like if we become so focused on ourselves, we're going to miss out on you. We're going to miss out on your power and your authority in our life. We're going to miss out on your blessings. We're going to miss out on just living a life following after you. Lord, I pray that you speak to our hearts today. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. We love you guys. I uh, can't wait to be back in person. I'm really tired of these videos, but uh, we're still able to share. Uh, thank you for tuning in. We love you guys. Catch you later.